on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo we are back for another episode review of black and crew compton this is season one episode two the air of hope before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit that notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all i also want to remind you before we get into the review where you can get this shirt positive vibes because that's what we are all about positive vibes here on this channel don't come here with that negative, because I ain't going back and forth with nobody. I ain't come for nobody. I ain't sending for nobody. We all about positive vibes. You can get this shirt at Andrea's Clothing. I will leave the link down in the description box below. And I love this little shirt, y'all. It fits me right. It's cute. And I've been getting a lot of compliments on it. So shout out to the creator. Her name is Briante Craig. Young, up and coming, entrepreneur, black girl magic, brown skin girl, all of that doing her thing shout out to you baby girl um i hope y'all are ready for this review this episode was pretty good um i hope y'all are ready for the review i'm ready to give it to you let's get right on up into it all right y'all so kp and penny proud they up in the gym going hard in the paint they got the ropes they got the bean bags they got the bells and whistles up in there they in the gym going hard in the paint and you know what it just made me miss being in the gym because i used to be addicted to the gym your girl hurt her back, and I fell all the way off. And no, that ain't no excuse or nothing like that. I ain't saying nothing like that. Because, you know, I've been getting back right. You know what I'm saying? A little bit here and there. My man still like it. Hi. But no, for real, y'all. They up in the gym. They going hard in the paint or whatever. And she can see that he's frustrated about something. So she like, baby, you know, what's up? What's going on? You up in here training like a damn gladiator or something. About to break my damn back. Like, what's going on? So he tells her the meeting with the OGs did not go so well. He did not get the blessing. Because you remember on the last episode... Um, at the very end of that um, episode, KP and um, his cousin Tim, that's who it is, his manager, they end up going and meeting with a couple of OGs. Now, they thought it was only going to be a couple of, you know, two, three of them here and there. Turns out it's like 5, 1100 Bloods that roll up in there. Tim, uh, Tim ended up getting jumped that night. That's what KP tells Kyla. And so um, she's like, you know, she understands that he means well. He wants to do something well for the community. He wants to, you know, bring uh, positive vibes to Compton. And so he wants everybody to see that. So she knows that. And she wants to have his back on that. And she tells him that, you know, this is dangerous out here on these streets. Because she's born and raised in Compton. She knows all about everything that's going on over there. The gang violence. How the gangs rule the neighborhoods damn what you got to get from the city the permits and 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 all of this and approvals for this that, and the other you got to get approval out here from these streets too and if the streets ain't feeling you you ain't finna get a damn thing out here in these damn streets so she tells him you know i got your back regardless of what you want to do i'm gonna ride this thing till the wheels fall off i just want you to be careful because she does want her babies to see you know their daddy out there doing something good but he tells her you know he don't know if he's doing the right thing Everybody on edge since Nip done got murked. They see if if a nigga gon' kill Black Jesus out in front of everybody, in front of all his disciples, they crazy out here. Everybody on edge. Don't nobody trust no goddamn body. And so he don't know if he doing the right thing. Still, he wants to bring some positive to the community. So he like, look here, I'm gonna have to pray on this. I'm going to have to get this to God. We're going to see what this thing going to do with a dude. Y'all, so Voodoo Doll and Nessie, they all having some little girl time or whatever bonding. I thought it was real cute. They out riding scooters around around the city or whatever. They stop, get a little something, something to eat on. So they just chill and have some girl talk or whatever, right? So Nessie asked Voodoo Doll, you know, you at the shop, is there anybody that you feel in? Anybody you think cute? Yada, yada, yada. Voodoo says she kind of feeling Barbie. Nessie like, um, chip. I see you, girl. And she like, but Voodoo Doll, you know, she, she, this is going to be her storyline. She always talking about how she was in the cult. Now, don't nobody know her struggle. Don't nobody know her life. Don't nobody know what she had for breakfast. I get that. That's going to be her storyline. She going to ride this thing to the wheel fall off, baby. I mean, you know, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But 
You know what I'm saying? She was saying, you know, because she used to be in this cult, how she was very sheltered. She couldn't do anything. But now she gets to be out. She gets to be free. She's a trisexual. She gonna try any damn thing. You down for it, she down for it too. So she feeling Barbie or whatever. Nessie say she got this little guy that she talking to, little whoop de whoop, you know, little yang yang, whatever. And um, she trying to see where things go with that. She trying to take it slow. She said she used to date this nigga that had a whole fake life, had fake jobs, fake uniforms, died a lot about a fake baby that died, like a, a real catfish type nigga. Y'all, hey, shout out, watch my catfish reviews. These last couple ones been crazy, and I'm finna do a couple of them more. Watch my catfish reviews, y'all. Anyways, but yeah, he was. she just talked to some old crazy ass nigga. She talked to some new nigga. Hopefully, everything work out from them. It was just cute. You know, it was a little girl time, whatever. Moving on from them. Y'all, so this next scene irritated me. It irritated me because I can already see how Danielle is finna get on my damn nerves. Danielle and Lemire, they're at their crib chilling or whatever. Barbie come over to the house. She's coming over there to talk, hang out or whatever with Danielle. Lemire like, okay, I can already see it's finna be, you know, y'all finna have your little girl time, gossiping and shit, I'm finna move around. He leave. Danielle asked that um Danielle asked Barbie like how's things going or whatever. Barbie tells her they didn't get the blessings from the OGs to open up the shop, so she don't know what's gonna happen from that. But she is happy that they all have a positive crew that's working there. She's like, yeah, this person's cool, this person's cool, um, this next um, this new girl that we got, Nessie there, she's cool, whatever. Immediately, Danielle is like, Nessie? Who the hell is Nessie? And she was like, well, that's Lemire homegirl. Lemire the one brought her in, said he known her for like eight years. She from Philly. Like, that's his homegirl. I don't know who this half is, who this bitch, da, da, da. She just started going off, and it instantly irritated me. Now, she already said on the last episode that he cheated on her before, and so she has to keep tabs on him. Now, look here, my mom. I'm not exactly old school, but I can, I'm obviously older than you, and I can let you know this from a married woman. Baby, if you got to, if you're going to forgive this man, forgive him and shut the hell up about it. But if you're going to forgive him and keep throwing it up in his face, Lemire, that's on you. And you deserve every little crazy bit of everything that this girl is doing because she on some, she on one, y'all. She on one. Barbie telling her, like, look, girl, hey, um, I ain't trying to start nothing. Please don't go back and tell Lemire that I came and I told you or nobody else that I told you about Nessie, the new girl that's working over here. Chop, because it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I keep my third eye out or whatever, but, girl, you tripping. You already going there and ain't nowhere to go. She's like, Danielle, it's like I'm already pissed. I'm already irritated. I don't want to know who this bitch is. He hides something for me. I don't trust her. She started calling Nessie every name but her damn birth name going off already basically thinking that lemire and nessie done messed around she don't she she don't know nothing about this girl and your home girl is telling you ain't nothing going on you got your own insecurities and lemire you finna have a whole baby with this girl Moving on from that. So this next scene was cute. KP goes over to his, um, I guess it's his mom's house. And his mom and his aunt are over there. They over there in the kitchen, flicking the wrist, baby. Making some damn po' boys. Oh, I wanted to eat them damn po' boys through the goddamn screen. That's my problem. Now I see food and I want to eat them shits. But them damn po' boys look good. He telling his mom and his aunt about how the meeting went with the OGs, how he didn't get the blessing, and how he's, you know, basically stuck. He don't know what to do. He got an old school praying mama. His mama was cute, too. Old school praying mama. She like, baby, uh, what you going out here asking these la ashy kneecap niggas the blessing? To open up your shop. The only person you need blessings from is Jesus. And if it ain't Jesus or one of his disciples, baby, you don't need the blessing from none of them ash and kneecap niggas. You better go on out there and open your damn shop. You my baby. I ain't scared of no goddamn body and I ain't scared of these streets. Because, see, he said his mom was born and raised as Compton as well. She don't play that shit. You do something to her, baby, she want to. Hun, about five of her ride or die homegirls gonna be at your trap house and waiting on your ass at the door. She ain't scared of nobody. And that's all the push that he needed. He like, look here, if my OG, triple OG, mom gonna tell me to damn what them niggas say, go ahead and open up my shop, baby, I'm fit to do it. And that's just what the hell he goddamn does. 
Y'all, Voodoo does this tattoo at her crib on this girl who's a longtime customer of hers. It's a throw little tattoo that she does on her leg, kind of like a little puppet cage type thing. I don't know, that was that was cute or whatever. Once again, she's talking about how she was born and raised in a cult. She was saying how she is the oldest of 13 kids. The Her final reasoning for running away, she said she was 20 years old. Her stepfather tried to get her in an arranged marriage. She ran away. Ever since then, she been young and wide and free, out there trying to live her best free trisexual life. And I ain't mad at a girl. You know, she, again, this is going to be her storyline. She was in the cult. She was very sheltered. She didn't have radio, didn't have TV, didn't have no friends. But she had 5,100 brothers and sisters. And, you know, I'm sure that there's so much more to it that we don't know nothing about. But um, at the same time, you know, she says that she has, like, basically PTSD from very condescending um, um, male chauvinistic type men. That's a trigger for her because she had to deal with that with her stepfather. So that's what she talks about. You know, that's her, basically, you know, her, her storyline about her. And like I said, she does throw that tattoo on her longtime client. It was cute, moving on from her. Y'all, so they having like this little groundbreaking party over there at the shop. It's not open just yet. It still needs to have renovations, but again, it's a groundbreaking party that they having. Everybody outside, partying, whatever, and like kind of like in the back of the shop. It's like a barbecue, little kickback neighborhood thing that they doing, right? Nessie invites her little dude that she talking to there. He shows up, everybody chilling, you know, outside, drinking, smoking their legal weed, having a good ass time. The next thing you you know, some girl comes and she kind of hugs old dude from behind and kind of kisses him like, hey baby, Nessie's dude that she invited, that she was chilling with, he done invited a whole nother female to the barbecue that she done invited him to. She automatically gets pissed. That's right, she had every right to get pissed, but the way she got pissed and the extent that she took it to was way too much. She started yelling, cussing, taking it all out to the front of the shop. Now, they was already in the back where, you know, it was somewhat secure. Couldn't nobody see what was going on. They could just hear all the damn ruckus. But then she goes outside. The girl who he invited obviously was not ready for that. I think she thought, okay, I'm just going to come, look cute, get on camera real quick, you know, whoop the woo But then she wasn't expecting all that smoke that Nessie bought. She walking down the street trying to call a damn Uber, yelling for the cameras to get on up out her face. Nessie all out in front of the doggone shop yelling at old boy. All the dudes, everybody was just standing around looking. At that moment, I felt like KP should have been like a lot sooner than he did because he was just kind of sitting back and just looking at everything unfold, watching this girl act crazy because she was acting a damn fool outside, cussing, yelling, just being real ignorant. Real ignorant. You had no reason to get out there and act like that. But she was just being real damn ignorant. So finally, KP like, look here. You can't be out here acting like this. It's enough. We already got to deal with stuff from the streets. These gangbangers out here looking at us. They already got their side eye on us watching everything that we do. And then you going to come out here with some old petty ass. You got another female at some party I invited you to. We don't need all of that. You know, we don't need all of that. So, y'all, the party kind of simmers down after that. KP mama pray over the, you know, shop before they, get, before they go in. You know, she prays over, does a cute little pray. Then everybody goes inside, take the party on inside because it was outside. But like I said, she done fucked up church's money. So, everybody got to go inside now. So, they go inside. They got the little sledgehammers. They banging the walls out or whatever. Everybody chilling. Once again, drinking, smoking their legal weed. You know, just doing their thing. God damn it, next thing you know, a group of 50 lamb hunted of the hardest looking bloods roll up in there. It was like, where the hell is KP? Who was KP? What you niggas doing in my goddamn neighborhood? What's going on, blood? What up, Sue? I was like, oh my goddamn, it's finna go down. Y'all, so shit was getting crazy for a minute. Niggas kind of started shoving each other back and forth. They was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He was starting getting crazy. Then KP was like, look here. Look, hold on. Let me let you know what I'm doing. I got this, this establishment. This is my tattoo shop. I don't want no problems. I know y'all didn't give me no blessings. But look here. Right now, 
I'm leaning on faith of Jesus that you're going to hear me out. I just want to bring something positive to the community. Everybody can come to, get tatted up or whatever. This ain't finna be no hot spot. This ain't no trap house. This ain't no trap door. This ain't no trap. None of that. We trying to get this money, get these damn tattoos done, all of that. This damn dude gonna say, well, what's in it for us? What's in it for us? I don't know how the street works, but what's in it for us? Nigga, place where you can come get you a damn tattoo, come get out the AC if it's hot outside or whatever, maybe come get you a little bit of water or something, and then get the hell on up out this damn stove. That's what it's for. But, hey, it's different politics when it comes to the street screens. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the hood, but I ain't from the street screens. So I don't know nothing, I don't know nothing about them politics right there. So he tells him all he had to do was mention black Jesus. Baby, once he mentioned black Jesus, it was a wrap. KP was like, look here, I'm just trying to do what Nip was trying to do. Nip trying to bring something positive to the community. He trying to bring something positive that the kids can see. The kids can see that it ain't got to be all this gang violence. You can put your guns down. You know, we can build up this money, buy some property. Nipsey would have wanted this. OG Triple OG was like, my Neezy, that's all you had to say. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Blood, cuss, woo, whoop, woo, all of that. He gave him the blessing. I know KP was like, whoo, I'm scared you niggas gonna kill me. I was scared for you too, KP. I was like, shit. The way they was rolling up in there, mm-mm. I wasn't, I, 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 I was not hopeful for you. For the, but he gave me the blessing. Thank God on that. Y'all, this next thing got on my damn nerves. So Lemire and Danielle, they at their crib again, chilling. They over there trying to put the baby stuff up together, right? Now, she never pro well, she did promise Barbie that she wasn't going to say nothing to him about Nessie, but of course she got damn lying because she's crazy. This half ago, ask Lemire, who the hell is Nessie? I know all of your friends. I know everybody you tattoo with. I don't know her. Who the hell is she? How long y'all been messing around? Lemire's like, she's just my homegirl. Ain't nothing going on between me and her. She just there to tattoo. We all there to tattoo and get this money. Like, what is you tripping for? She was like, look here. I know y'all be partying. You can't party with her. I don't want you to be around her. I don't want you to breathe the same ass how you and she left. You need to be right. Just being real, real silly. Again, if this man cheated, you decided to forgive him. Why then still continue to harbor the same feelings and steady throw it up in his face. Because baby girl, the more you you nagging at him and you coming at him, that ain't gonna make him not do nothing. Like that don't make no sense. She was just getting the edges, the edges, the, see, she got me talking crazy, baby. The edges was starting to itch. The heifer was getting on my damn nerves. If this man cheated, you decide to forgive him, forgive him, and shut the hell up and move the hell on from it. If you ain't over it, then move the hell on from it, girl. Y'all, so the whole crew is at the beach chilling, having like some team bond and stuff. Just out there having a little bonfire, chilling on the beach. They start playing drinking games, right? They start playing drink or dare. So, um, Nessie got, you know, drink or dare or whatever. It was to dare her to take a body shot off a of voodoo doll. Now, voodoo doll was okay with it, although she was really hoping it was Barbie taking a damn Barbie, a body shot off her ass. That's neither here nor there. She does a little body shot or whatever. Next up, it was Lemire. He had to do a strip tease for voodoo doll. Baby, he getting ready to do a strip tease. This bitch, Danielle, show up like a damn shadow. Now, they was on the beach, which means it takes a while to walk down there. Didn't nobody see this damn girl getting out the car, getting her shit together, and walking all the way up there? Because when I tell you she showed up like a thief in the night, she showed up out of no damn where. Literally. It was like... Like, it, it was crazy. She showed up out of no goddamn where. So... She like, um, I have a GPS tracker on his phone since the last time he cheated on me and I got it on there for the baby. For the baby? Girl! Immediately, she come in there on some petty shit. Hey, what we doing? Oh, we playing games? Oh, okay, cool. I want to play too. I want to play a game. Lemire like, hey, what is you doing? Like, what is you, 
what what the hell she like um i looked at the gps and it said you over here at the beach what are you doing at the beach you supposed to be at work like girl you doing the absolute goddamn most and of course she knew nessie was gonna be there that's the only goddamn reason why she shows up so she's like no y'all playing games let's play games so she gets the truth of their question or whatever they ask her like what are some things that she don't like or something like that She's like, I don't like hoe-ass bitches that try to fuck with other people, man. Everybody was absolutely caught off guard by that. Because, again, we're on some positive vibes over here. Where the hell did that come from? Everybody is, like, looking dumbfound as hell. Lemire pulls her to the side and is like, look here, you need to stop tripping. You coming out here tripping for nothing. I done told you. You need to trust me. They start going back and forth. He like, look, you need to leave. She like, okay, well, hold on one second. She goes and gets Nessie. Can I talk to you for a minute? Because they're over there arguing about Nessie. Nessie can clearly hear her name being thrown left and right out of her and his mouth. So when she pulls Nessie to the side, she tells her, um, I just want to let you know, yes, we were talking about you, ho-ass bitch, and I want to let you know, you better not be messing with my man. Just ignorance. Nessie is trying to tell the girl, look here, ain't nothing going on with me and him. There has never been anything going on with me and him. At me, side note, outside of looking in, she ain't messing with that boy. What is wrong with you? Nessie is trying to tell her that. Lemire tells Nessie, look, can you go over there, please? Can you go over there? Again, he tells Danielle, you need to leave. She gets mad and she ends up leaving as he comes back nessie's like let me you should have just let us talk because i was trying to let her know like look ain't nothing going on with me and her let me is like nah ain't nobody finna talk to my girl because i know that can lead to an argument nessie is trying to let him know look it would not have led to an argument one because i wasn't gonna let it go there and two we are just two grown women trying to have a conversation but he know he know his woman his baby mama she ain't no grown woman she ignorant and she on some old and she about to be your baby mama. Boy, you in for some shit. You in for some shit. She finna have your ass in some shit. She gonna use that baby as a weapon on you. And I feel bad for you for that. I feel bad for even saying that. But you can already see that's what she's doing now. She's very, very... She just does the most. And so Lemire starts getting irritated with Nessie yelling at her. Ain't nobody gonna talk to my girl. Period. That's what it is. Ain't nobody gonna... He started going off on Nessie. Then Tim and KP telling Lemire, hey, you need to check your girl. You need to get your girl in check. Okay, and uh, Lemire's telling them, yeah, when I get home, I'm going to take care of it. Now, Voodoo Doll sees this, and Voodoo Doll starts having PTSD and flashbacks of how chauvinistic much all left that her dad her stepdaddy was and so that starts to put her in her own feelings she then tells them y'all are some you know chauvinistic assholes again she's got her own feelings that she's in tim then decides okay let me be an asshole and let me do this he says i think somebody needs to cool down and then proceeds to spray her in the face with a water gun now i don't know just me I didn't see nothing funny about that whatsoever. Yes, it was out of line because they don't know where she was coming from. And at that moment, had they been human being and seen that, okay, she and her feelings about something, what are you upset about? They could have talked to her to see what it was that she was upset about. But instead, being on some real petty ignorant shit, they spray in the face with a water gun. She gets pissed. She tries to chase after Tim falls down all the guys start laughing at her kp as well kp was just kind of sitting back just watching everything watching everything as a leader kp you should have been the first one to break all of that up like no hey stop we're not gonna do none of this so voodoo dog gets pissed off she like y'all are ghetto as hell yeah that was ghetto i was right there with you voodoo that was ghetto she gets pissed off and she leaves y'all and that's the end of that episode right there again i did not see nothing funny when they sprayed her in the face with a water gun i get like yeah you need to chill out cool off like you getting heated 
chill out. I get that. But at that moment, she was feeling something. And y'all should have been like, hey, like, what's going on with you? What are you and your feelings for? And then you could have had a conversation like two human beings, had some positive vibes, and everything would have been all right. If y'all watched this episode, y'all let me know what y'all think about it. Drop down in the comments below and let me know what y'all think. Once again, don't forget about Andrea's clothing. I will leave her info down in my description box. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.